let me just do one more thing, uh, which I forgot. Let me live stream the webinar uh, uh, as well. Uh, one second, I'm, I'm just starting that. Just starting the live feed. Give give me one minute. All right, so so we have gone live on on, on Facebook as well. Um, if we move on, um, Arun, uh, can you move to the next slide? Right. So let me tell you how the platform works, how the webinar will work. Um, um, as, as as you would have seen when you would have entered, uh, now you are seeing the presentation. But you would have seen uh, C and Beyond's uh, name, and you see three options over here: chat, raise hand, and Q and A. Um, so the speaking rights are given to the host and the presenter. So so people from Solent University uh, and 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 from C and Beyond, they can only uh, speak. If you want to speak, please raise your hand, and we will uh, give you the speaking rights. But mostly we try and avoid that because uh, you know there might be five ten persons who want to speak at the same time, which creates it's a bit of a chaos. Um, on the uh, you, how do you communicate as a participant? Two ways. Uh, one through the uh, chat, uh, wherein we have exchanged greetings, and and that's where you you can communicate. But if you if you have a comment, uh, if, if you have a suggestion, please put it on the chat window. If you have a question, then there is a Q and A um, uh, button, wherein uh, if you, if you click there, you can write your questions over there. And um, and and I'll, I'll come to how, how does the Q Q and A work in the next slides, which we uh, come through. But but that, that's essentially uh, what um, um, how 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 the webinar works, how this platform uh, uh, works. If we move on to the next slide, Arun. Sure. Some reason it is. Uh... Getting delayed from. Okay, okay, right. So, um, uh, why are we doing this webinar? Um, so, and and I almost uh, most of the times I tell my story that uh, while I was a chief officer, I wanted to enhance myself. I wanted to know what all I could do, and uh, honestly. Um, you know, a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend told me about something, and and I, I understood about some information from from all of them. I did my own search internet at that time, probably you know, fifteen years it, it was there, but probably not, not that much uh, uh, prevalent. And and uh, you know, for for various reasons, I didn't know what what I should do. I enrolled for a course. Uh, um, which which was essentially BSc in nautical science, uh, which I did for three years. And what did I learn? I learned the same things which I learned during my mates, masters, uh, uh, license as such. Uh, so uh, essentially, my awareness at that point was fairly low. 
uh, which I uh, which which you want to increase the awareness. You want to uh, increase the awareness of uh, the maritime fraternity on various courses that 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 are offered by various universities. Um, we want that awareness to come through the credible sources. And on in one go, you have a consolidated information from the credible sources. It all of this will help you to evaluate the relevance of this information. Everyone has different things in your in in, in a person's mind, and uh, when you hear directly from the course leaders, it will help you to evaluate the relevance for the information, and which essentially helps you to make well-informed decisions. So that's essentially the reason why we would uh, we, we we are doing the webinar. Some do's and don'ts. Please submit the question now and which with every slide. You can submit the questions anytime, but the question will be taken at the end itself. A uh, suggestion is wait for some time because a few of your questions will be covered in the um, in the uh, in, in, in the presentation as such. And uh, so so wait for a, a some time. But after the slide, if you have a question on that slide. Uh, and so that you don't forget, maybe you can put in your question then and there itself as well. Uh, also, what we have done is a list of FAQs, which are the most common uh, questions which are asked. The link for that is being uh, sent in the chat window as well. So you can just open that link. You will see a PDF document. The most common questions are already there. Um, on the uh, uh, Q&As, when you ask a Q&A, try to make it a little bit more generic in nature. Uh, you know, more specific questions we can take after the webinar. So that can be a one to one with with any of, of us in the CNB on team. And we can take it one on one because uh, very, very specific questions is very difficult to answer them. And we will share the slides of the presentation with you after the um, after the webinar uh, finishes. We move on Arun. Right. Um, let me also introduce uh, to you, Miss Nikki. But uh, thank you, uh, Nikki, for being uh, for for being here on the webinar. Uh, she is a qualified deck officer uh, with a tanker background. Yeah, she's of course done her MPhil, and uh, um, she's uh, also enrolled to or associated with various professional organizations. Uh, honestly, I don't remember the, the full names of these organizations, but but essentially she's <clears throat> very, very well read and very well connected. She's been a deck officer with tanker background uh, with Solent for the past 15 years. She's the course leader for the maritime business courses at uh, Solent, <clears throat> as well as for the undergraduate uh, and postgraduate uh, courses. And she's done that uh, her undergraduation and postgraduation from Solent as well. <coughs> She is uh, lecturing in the maritime transport and operations, port and terminal management, and, and also on marine pollution management. Uh, very interestingly, she's also the examiner for uh, Plymouth University and BCA at Athens. Her research interest, and she has a variety of uh, interest in the research, is on protection of uh, marine environment, sustainability, equality, and diversity and with the focus on developing an understanding between the wet and dry sides of shipping. And it's a very, uh, um, uh, very, very, uh, I mean, the, the way she has put it, the wet and dry sides of shipping, I'll probably let her explain that a bit. And she's done her uh, consultancy and research on, uh, um, in, in, in from EU, on, on uh, with, with EU, with OSPAR, uh, and with other uh, organizations as well. Um, uh, thank you, Nikki, for uh, for being uh, here. And um, um, Arun, if you move on uh, to the next slide, what we'll, I'll do is I will take a poll so that we understand the audience uh, as such. Uh, uh, and so, so it's essentially we are introducing the audience to Nikki, and then I'll uh, leave the platform for Nikki to talk essentially. <coughs> <coughs> So we have the poll over here. If you could possibly enter the your your answers on the poll, your rank on the poll. I think these polls are very exciting. It's like a race. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
uh, six anonymous right now. Yes. Okay. Everyone to possibly uh, put in their answers. We've got about ninety percent of the people who have uh, answered. I'll let me stop the poll uh, now. I'll let me share the results. We have about thirty-six uh, percent on the top four, forty-two uh, percent at the operational level uh, sailing, another twelve percent ex sailors who are settled ashore. And nine percent of the audience has never been to sea. So that's the mix of uh, audience uh, we have. So, so over to you, Nikki. Uh, I'll stop. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll stop the poll result now. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm assuming it's afternoon. It's um, morning in the UK. Um, I'm really. Delighted that um, Captain Gaurav and Aaron have invited me to come and speak to you. Um, it's always nice when we have the opportunity to speak directly to potential applicants for our courses, um, because it's a little bit more personal than just going to a web page and looking at a lot of information and generally getting quite overwhelmed and thinking, is it for me, isn't it for me? So I'm hoping that I'll be able to sort of answer a few questions as I go through the um, presentation and sort of give you a little bit of um, background about the courses and the philosophy. So Aaron, press the button. Right. <laughs> okay, so, so- We have a poll in this slide. Okay, cool. Um, so yes, let's start off right at the beginning and just find out um, on this poll, which is going to be opened up, how many of you are actually aware of Solent University already um, and Warsash Maritime Academy? Okay. That's it. Around 50, 50 percent. That's that's uh, that's pretty cool. I thought we were going to end up end up with a dead heat there. Okay, um, so that's that's actually very interesting to actually see that um, it is such an even split. Um, okay, brilliant. So now that you've uh, some of you know who is who we are, and others others don't. Um, you know, you must be asking the question, well, why should you study for a maritime degree at Solent University? Solent University and Warsash Maritime Academy have a very long history and a global reputation as far as provision of maritime education goes. Um, Warsash has been training professional seafarers um, for over 60 years. Um, way over 60 years in actual fact. They started just after the Second World War. Um, and Solent University started offering degrees for what I call the dry side of shipping um, about 15 years ago. So Gura mentioned sort of this wet and dry side. I see as an ex seafarer myself that professional seafarers work on the wet side of the industry um, incredibly important job in this current pandemic. We've seen just how important shipping is to the world. Without shipping, we would have essentially ground to a halt completely. Um, so we have the professional seafarers um, who are the qualified, the captains, the engineers, the ratings on board the ship. They work in the wet side of the industry. The dry side of the industry are the people working in business, in ports, in logistics. So essentially, they are the facilitators. We find the cargoes, we get the cargoes from A to B to the port. Um, we work in the insurance side. So the two together are very symbiotic. They need each other. Um, but there is a very clear difference. Um, and one of the things I've noticed since I've been in academia and working um, in education is there is a great disconnect between the wet side and the dry side. There's almost a lack of understanding. And my theory, and we all have to have a theory in life, 
is that if we can get the dry side to understand the constraints and the issues faced by the wet side, that, you know, perhaps the industry would work better. Because I'm sure all of you who do work at sea have had some sort of form of commercial pressure put on you, where you've had the office saying, I don't care what's going on, you must arrive at the port at this time, you know, trying to get you to do all sorts of things that you really know as a professional seafarer you shouldn't be doing, or actually potentially putting yourself, your ship, your cargo in danger. So to me, it's really, really important that the people ashore understand what's going on. Likewise, for the people on the ships to understand the pressure everyone is facing ashore. Whilst we're not putting cargo and people in danger, there are a lot of people that are relying on us. Um, so coming back to the wet and dry and why study for a degree at Solent University, there comes a point in everyone's life where you decide, maybe I don't want to be at sea anymore, or perhaps being at sea is not for me. Um, I think a lot of people have been very tested over the past year, particularly the seafarers. Um, you've been treated incredibly badly. Um, so, you know, there is this point in your life where you come to and you think, what do I do now? So our role at Southampton, at Solent, is to actually try and get seafarers with a huge amount of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge and experience, get you prepared to come and work ashore. So fill in some of the missing gaps um, as far as sort of business goes, particular aspects of international trade and law, it might be logistics. So we're going to try and utilize all of the knowledge that you've gained, but give you the additional supporting knowledge you need to actually enter the world of business. Um, so back to Solent. So we do work with undergraduate students right the way through to postgraduate students. We take cadets and we go all the way up to master mariners. So we provide this sort of, um, I suppose it's a one-stop shop for all things maritime. Um, we have in lots of links with the maritime industry and the logistics industry, not just sort of through our um, courses that we deliver, but also because we've been doing it for a long time. Um, we have a huge um, alumni now, again, both seafarers and um, maritime business people. And I suspect out of those of you who said you've heard of Warsash Maritime Academy and Solent, um, there may even be a few of you who've actually done some of the courses in Southampton, um, some of your professional courses. Obviously, we are based in Southampton. We have the UK's second largest um, container port on our doorstep, the largest cruise terminal in Europe. Um, it's a major logistics hub as far as the movements of automotive vehicles go as well. Um, we're also very close to London, which is the maritime hub of the world. It's still the maritime hub. We have the pretenders trying to come and get us. So Singapore, definitely after our title, um, we have Shanghai. They'd like to be the greatest maritime um, city in the world. Um, you know, and I, I have no doubt that perhaps Mumbai is also going to be chasing that um, title in a few years time, who knows? Um, so we are very well set. Okay. Next slide, please, Aaron. Okay, as far as location goes, and in the UK, we like to say location is everything. Um, as you can see, Southampton, um, nice little arrow pointing to where we are. Um, we have the Isle of Wight just in front of us. As far as shipping goes, we are the first port in on the English Channel, the first major port and also going the other way, the last port out. Um, we have a double tide, which means that ships have more access. Um, so we have the standing tide. 
Um, so we are in a really good position. We're well linked by motorways. London's only an hour away by train. Heathrow and Gatwick airports are very close. Unfortunately, not doing much at the moment. But come September, hopefully we'll all be back to normal. Um, so geographically, it is a very convenient location. Um, as you can see, all the motorways, so we have coaches as well. Um, we'll get you to London very quickly in the airport. If you're into your history, we have Winchester, um, which is the ancient capital. We have Salisbury and Stonehenge. At Portsmouth, we have um, the historic dockyards, if you're into um, looking at some of the old ships, including the Mary Rose, which was brought up from the seabed. Um, so it, it's a very convenient location. Okay, Aaron, next one. So we have a poll here. Okay, um, I can't remember what the poll is. Um, <laughs> okay, Aaron, you're going to have to talk me through. I knew this would happen. I've got a, a terrible, terrible brain. Um, okay, so the question I'm asking you is, if you consider we have two postgraduate degrees, one is international maritime business, the other is international shipping and logistics. What percentage of the students on the course and who attend the course do you think come from a shipping background? So professional seafarers. Wow, looks like a split uh, in all, all four portions, an equally split. It is, it is. Okay, I think we're pretty much there. So I find that actually really interesting that the majority of you are going for 70% um, of you or the majority think that over 70% of our students are actually from a shipping background. Um, interestingly enough, um, it's actually between 20 and 50%. Um, now, question, why? Essentially, on these postgraduate courses, um, we have a lot of people who sort of stumbled across shipping. They may have done an undergraduate degree in economics, in trade, in law, and to them, what they're actually um, realizing is that shipping is probably the best kept secret in the world as far as business opportunities go and logistics go. Um, and they've decided they don't want to go into general business or general law, um, and they found this niche. Now, one of the strengths to me of the courses are the fact that we do have students who've done the economics, the law, the business, uh, it could be uh, marketing management, and they're mixing with the professional seafarers. So you're using each other and you're bouncing off each other and you're supporting each other and you're learning from each other. That's absolutely essential at postgraduate level is that you actually, you come to the table, you come into the course with your experience, with your existing knowledge and you look at how you can apply it and you share. Because when you go into business and you go into management, one of the key things that you will be doing is applying your knowledge and sharing your knowledge and that's how you make the best decisions so as i said there are two postgraduate degree options available one is the international maritime business and the other is the shipping and logistics um, in a minute i'll show you how the courses are differentiated there are obviously key elements that you um, will do no matter which route you follow but there is some differentiation a little bit later on. Okay, Aaron. Okay, so what is our sort of course aim and course philosophy? What we're trying to do is to provide a program that is intellectually challenging, it's stimulating, um, and focusing obviously on international shipping and logistics. But what we want to do is to actually also have a good balance between theory and practice. Um, 
as professional seafarers, some of you, you've got a lot of knowledge. Um, so what we want to do is we want to see the knowledge applied. We want to produce graduates that are work ready so that from day one of entering into their new role, you know, into a business, they become a highly valued member of staff. And it's one of the things that we hear again and again from our employees, you know, well, why do you like Solent graduates? And they say, because they are work ready from day one, they are usable. We don't have to go back and we don't have to teach them all the basics. Um, so this is really, really important. And again, having lots of theory is fantastic. Um, because it will underpin a lot of the things, the decisions that you make, but you need to know also how to apply that theory, okay? How do you use it to help you analyze a situation and come up with a justified and a sensible solution to a problem? So we are essentially focusing on real life skills and real life learning, um, to which end, what we want to do is we will get companies to provide us with real scenarios and real problems. And we use these for the assessments. So we say, look, this is something that's happened. Um, you know, what solutions are available? How could we actually change the company or change the way we process something? Um, so this is what we're really looking at. So we want to get this nice balance of theory, practical knowledge and skills that are going to be really useful in your future life. Um, obviously we need you to develop, to develop knowledge. So for seafarers, we're looking at management type things. We're looking at legal, um, we're looking at international trade. For those students who've come from maybe an international trade or a politics background, we need to bring them up to speed on the shipping side of things, which again is where we really do rely on the course teammates working together and sharing. Um, so you are not only the student, but you are also the teacher. Um, and this is something that again, as professional seafarers, the professional seafarers out there amongst you, it's something you'll be doing in your day-to-day -day job anyway, the mentoring, the training of the younger people. Likewise, those of you who are in business um, and haven't been to sea, you know about mentoring, you know about the importance of having people who can show you the way, so to speak, and rather than leave you to try and figure it out by yourself, they say, well, actually, no, this is what we need to do. Um, so it's all about getting you to hone your skills, build up your knowledge, learn how to assess a situation, analyze, evaluate, how to develop these really good, solid, practical problem solving skills, um, you know, and to understand all of this in the commercial and the business context. Okay, next slide. Okay, another poll, no. Yeah. This is the poll at the end. <laughs> okay, so the other thing we need to talk about is assessment met methods um, and also the visa requirements. So the question is, what percentage of students are from international? Interesting. Okay, nearly there. Okay, so most of you are sitting on 50 to 70%. Okay, um, right, shipping is a global industry. Okay, it's very international in outlook. Um, at Solent, we have on our postgraduate degree courses, pretty much over 90% of our students are international every single year. Um, in the UK for an island nation, bizarrely, shipping is 
and maritime business are probably the best kept secrets in the world. She doesn't really, doesn't make much sense to me, but there you go. So we do have a very high number of international students. So just for example, um, this year in our student um, body, we have students from America, we have students from Germany, we have students from Pakistan, we have students from Malaysia, we have students from Nigeria, and one girl from the UK. <laughs> so it's just to give you a little snapshot. Um, so it's, it is very international and again, this internationalization is really important as well for helping when you've completed your degree, it develops your global network of contacts. I've been teaching at Settlement for about 15 years and every year, four or five times a year, I will get an email from a past student says, Nikki, Nikki, do you know anybody who's got an office in Ulaanbaatar? And I'm like, Ulaanbaatar, that's Mongolia, it's inland. No, no, I've got a real issue. I've got to get this product from here to there. And you're just like, whoa, okay. So I will then try and put people together, but people will also use their own network of contacts who they've met on the courses. And they do become really, really important to you. Our alumni, um, is up in the, gosh, from the business courses, we're talking about 1,500 plus alumni who are on the network. So that is a huge number of people who are there available. Um, the other thing about our alumni, and certainly for me, having been here for 15 years, I'm now seeing students who started off in their first year of an undergraduate degree are now in the senior management positions. I have students who have their own shipping companies now, who've got their own chartering companies, um, and they come to the university and say, don't suppose you've got any good students you can send me. Um, and sometimes it would be, you know, well, I've got this office in Malaysia and I need someone local to the area who understands the area. Um, so it's also sort of the role of the lecturers, I guess, to make, maintain this um, communication with our students and to keep the dialogue going so you have a really effective um, network. Um, okay, so let's get back to assessments because of course you're gonna get assessed in your courses. Um, believe it or not, we really don't like exams. Exams are not a good way of establishing whether somebody has a true understanding and has a really good ability to analyze or critique something. Examinations tend to be about rote learning and repetition and providing standardized answers. Um, professional seafarers amongst you, you're used to exams, you know what you've got to do, I've got to learn X, Y and Z, I've got to learn the rule of the road, I need to be able to spout it verbatim, whatever. Um, and also, I believe in India, the general education system is very much built on examinations. Now, I'm looking at Guru and Aaron and saying, please say yes. Um, so it is going to be very different. We love an assessment. Um, so what we ask you to do is maybe to write a report, like a formal business report. So what we want is clear, concise writing. We don't want you to be literal. We don't want you to be poetic. Um, you know, this is a business degree. It is not a literature or a social degree. Um, and you need to be able to write clearly and concisely. Occasionally you'll get an essay. So if it's something to do with law where there's a bit more discussion needed, it will be an essay. You will most definitely be asked to work in groups because when you're in the world of business, you work in groups. Um, why do we make you do this? Because again, when you're in the real business world and you're working in a group, there is always gonna be one, maybe two people who actually do nothing. And they expect everyone else to do the work for them. 
Um, so a skill and a very important skill is to learn how do I actually get these people who are not engaging and not doing the work to actually join in? Um, and if they persist in not joining in, okay, how am I going to deal with this? Is it fair that they get the same mark even though they've done nothing? So again, you're going to try and work out how to deal with you know, a quite nasty situation. Um, likewise, we'd like people to do oral presentations, being confident and being able to speak out is really important. Um, I think this past year has um, definitely brought to the fore the importance of being able to speak to people in front of a camera and be confident um, and also to try and be clear and concise in what you're saying. Um, it's a very different world we're moving into. Um, so you are going to be expected to do, I would imagine, more and more oral presentations as you, you know, enter the world of business. There is one examination, and that is for economics of international trade and shipping, because essentially it is one of those topics that has to have um, an examination because it involves numbers. Um, you'll all be delighted to know I don't teach anything that involves numbers. I, I don't do numbers. They confuse me. I leave that to my colleagues who are um, much, much um, better at teaching. Um, as far as attendance goes, um, attendance is part of the tier four visa re requirement. So this is a student visa requirement. Um, so we monitor all sessions for attendance. We even monitor online attendance um, as we have been this past year. If we cannot explain poor attendance, um, it's reported back to the Home Office. And the reason we have to do that is because the Home Office in the UK do a lot of random checks and they will just turn up and they want to see all our attendance records. Um, it is the Home Office that give the university the license to issue the visas. So we have to make sure that we are sticking to all of their requirements. Okay, now talking about international, um, and we talked about how many students are um, international on our courses. The teaching team are also very, very international. Um, we are, I would say, two thirds international, one third UK um, staff. So we have staff from Iran, from India, from Pakistan, from China, um, where else one, from Italy. Um, so we have quite a wide range of um, staff who teach. And again, very, very much um, a replication of the industry itself. Um, as far as qualifications go for the lecturing staff, on the um, MSC, the International Shipping and Logistics and Maritime Business, um, all of the staff, with the exception of one, have worked in the industry in a one way, shape or form. So they've either been to sea, they've been charterers, they've been agency, they've been um, port operations, you name it, they've actually done it. So we are coming from and speaking to you from experience. We have one pure academic and that pure academic does the finance and the economics. But they did do both their undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in maritime related subjects, interestingly enough, then did a PhD in finance. Strange. Um, okay, next slide, I believe, Aaron. Okay, so the curriculum that we have is informed by industry. Um, as a university, we do pride ourselves on real life learning and making sure that what you're learning is important to the industry. So we worked with the industry. We developed the curriculum with industry. What do they want? Where is the industry going? We revalidate generally every five years, but we also update if needs be in between the five year periods. 
Um, so what you learn is valid and relevant to today's industry. You know, we're not going to dwell on history. Um, we have to go forward. So for an example, one of the areas that we're finding we're having to look at now is um, the potential impact of autonomous shipping on the industry. Um, so it's something that we will cover. Um, how trade has had to change. Obviously in the UK, Brexit has had a bit of an impact on our trade. So the students are now very much involved in looking at the legal sides, the legal issues, um, and also, you know, the potential for developing trade agreements elsewhere. How is this going to impact on supply and demand and moving goods? So those are just sort of examples of how we have to be agile. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this focusing on real life and the assessments that we get from, you know, informed by industry does help prepare you for the business environment. And Aaron, away we go. Okay, so the talk content, um, essentially, uh, the bits in italics and bold are the differentiators, but all of you, whichever course you go to, you would do maritime management, you would do international maritime law, maritime operations and transport. For those of you from the sea, this is almost a value added bonus because it's where you get to share your knowledge and hopefully because it's one of the first units that you actually get assessed in, it's a really nice way of getting you prepared and getting back into sort of education, I suppose. Um, economics of international trade and shipping and research methods and proposals. So the titles pretty much do what they say on the tin. I mean, that there is no hidden agenda there. Um, if you go on the solar website, you will be able to access the unit descriptors for all of these. So you can actually see what is taught. Um, then we come to the differentiators. Now, the business students are going to do international trade and commercial law and finance and business risk. Their dissertation, okay, their final project must be related to a business scenario. Okay, so the research must focus on, it could be strategy, it could be um, economics, it could be um, business development but it has to be based on something in the business world. Likewise for shipping and logistics, so the specialist areas there are the supply chain management and the operational risk management. And again, the dissertation is going to be very much focused on operations. It can be ports, it can be logistics, um, whatever, but it has to have that degree specific element um, to give you sufficient differentiation. As far as sort of the maritime management goes and the maritime operations, um, you will, both sides will be looking not just at straightforward business, but you will be looking at some of the issues of logistics and procurement, um, HR, marketing. So you will cover an awful lot of different areas um, in the degrees. The degrees rely on you being quite self-driven, quite motivated. So you will have your taught elements and you will have your seminars, but you will have a lot of work to do as well outside of the taught area. All the teaching is done on two days. So it's done on a Tuesday and it's done on a Thursday. So you scratch your head and say, oh, great, I've got five days off. No, you don't have five days off. You might have Sunday off, but Monday, Wednesday and Friday, we'd expect you to be in the library doing your reading, completing tasks that have been set for you to prepare for seminars, reading case studies, um, so you have to be prepared to put in more than double 
the effort that, you know, beyond the classroom. Um, okay, next slide. Um, just as a point of interest, our degrees are accredited and recognized by both the um, Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. I am a chartered member of the Institute of Logistics and Transport, which is one of the things that Gaurav couldn't quite figure out. Um, we're also from the Chartered Institute of Shipbrokers. Um, so the industry does recognize for the Chartered Institute of Shipbrokers, you will get dispensation on a couple of their formal examinations based on the fact that you've undertaken the degree. And the next one, Aaron. Okay, so the nitty gritty now, really, the application program, um, go onto the course webpage, read through everything. If you decide that, yes, actually, I think this is what I want to do, there is a link, a big link that says apply. Click on that one. Um, then what it will ask you to do, um, because you won't have registered, it will just ask you to register and then it will take you right the way through the process. Um, I would advise you to make sure that you have all of your documents scanned. So this could be your certificate of competency. It could be an undergraduate degree you've done if you come from not in the industry. Um, any language tests, make sure you've got those scanned and ready to upload because we can't do anything with an application. You may have written the most fantastic personal statement about why you'd like to come and study with us, but without the documents, we can't process anything. As far as entry requirements go, if you are coming to us with just an undergraduate degree, you require a classification of a 2-2 two -two or above. Um, we will also look at people who have an ordinary degree or an HND that's in a technical or business discipline, but it has to be supported by appropriate professional experience. So in the industry, it could be a shore side, it could be working in a port, it could be working for a shipping company. Okay. Um, for the professional side, would expect you to have your master's um, or at least your STCW 2.2 certificate of competency. Um, four years as an officer, you don't have to have sailed as a master. That's not required, okay? Um, for language, and again, for the professional seafarers, I apologize, we know that English is the language of the sea, but you are still required to um, meet the requirements for IELTS or Duolingo. And it's really important that you do make sure that, you know, your English is up to scratch. So if you are hoping to come to Solent, start listening to the news in English and reading English newspapers, okay, as much as you can, speak it as much as you can, because it will help you so much with understanding and keeping up with um, lectures. Um, the fees are there for all to see. Um, if you want more information on the degrees, um, if you click on the link at the bottom or go to the Solent webpage, um, you'll find the maritime business degrees. Um, click on postgraduate and look for the two MSCs. Next one, please, Aaron. Okay, important now, the um, visa and the post-education right to work in the UK. Um, if you have studied full time in the UK for a year um, with a tier four visa, and if you're going to graduate after summer 2021, you will be able to apply and request a two year post-study work visa. Um, your study, your course of study must be undertaken at a recognized university. So that's something a university the Home Office recognizes um, if that's the case, you will be allowed to have this two years period after your degree where you can 
work in a UK based um, business. Um, you can't extend the right to work visa after two years. However, there may be a case where you become eligible to actually switch to an alternative visa route, which is the skilled worker route. So after you've done your study, you've done your two year right to work and got experience, there may be an option to switch route onto the skilled worker route. Um, you can find lots of information on the um, UK CESA website. Um, you can access this through the Solent International pages and there's the address at the bottom there. Just click on the tab that says employment. So if you want to read more about this right to work, all of the information is there. The international tab, the living in the UK tab on the website, it has an extraordinary amount of information. Pretty much every question you could possibly want to know about working or even just living in the UK, how do I go about finding accommodation? You know, if you come to the university, it's really, really well set up. And the international team at Solent are amazing. Um, they are really, really good. Um, and I'm hoping that Garrow and Aaron can both vouch for that as well because they deal with our international office. Okay, next one. Okay. Um, the other bit is support for international students. As I said, on this international web page, there is lots of information. It talks about fees and funding. It talks about the accommodation. It talks about how you get your visa and how, how to go about getting your CAS completed and moving to the UK. So it is really, really important that you do visit this site. Make sure, you know, you may think, yes, actually, I really want to do that degree, but please take the time to look at all of this other information because there's nothing worse than setting your heart on something and suddenly realizing, oh, I can't do that. Okay, so make sure you are as well informed as possible. Um, and as I said, there is so much information available. Um, and also Gurav and Aaron, I know, um, will also be able to assist you with um, dealing with a lot of questions. Okay, we have a poll okay. again. Dun, da, da, da. Where is it? <laughs> Okay, so considering sort of where you think your future might lie, um, if you're coming ashore, or even, you know, what do I want to do? What area are you most interested in? Okay. Well, that's very definite, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. And uh, this is unexpected lines, honestly. It looks like quite a few of you have a plan, which is brilliant. Um, you know, it, it is always good to have a plan. Um, and as far as sort of the commercial operation sides go, um, you know, a lot of you are bringing a lot of knowledge and skills to the table. So that's fantastic. Um, that's really, really very pleasing to see. Um, quite interestingly, I'd, I'd quite like to see a few more seafarers involved in logistics, the truth be told, um, purely because of the ability of seafarers, and I guess it's in your training, to actually be able to make decisions, very important decisions, quite quickly. Um, because in logistics, what we need are agile people, people who can actually analyse a situation and you know, make a decision and stick with it um, and damn be the consequences. But it's important in this life. OK, um, and I think the last, the next slide is just going to give you a quick snapshot just to make sure that you've all thought. So, Aaron, if you want to go over. OK, so a quick look at jobs that are available. So obviously ship and ship shipping company management. One you might not have thought of, uh, marine accident investigation. We have quite a few people go into marine accident investigation. Um, it's a very interesting job. 
um, maritime business development, voyage operations, port development, um, client agency, um, managers, charterers, obviously, brokers. Um, so basically the people buying and selling the actual cargoes, port operations and logistics management. And then just a snapshot underneath of a few. And this is literally, I just went in and I just copy and pasted sort of last year's students. Where did everyone go? So we've got DHL, Grimaldi, BP, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, One, um, Oldendorf, CMA. I mean, these names should be very familiar to you. The likes of Fernleys and Clarksons um, are big chartering companies. Um, One not only do operations and management, but they also do chartering as well. Um, Oldendorf. Again, they have the ships, they also have the charters, as do Cargill. So our students do go to, you know, some of the largest companies in the world. And the other thing that you should take from this, pretty much all of these companies have offices dotted around the world. So it's not a case of, okay, you will be in the UK office or you will be in the office in Singapore. You know, there is opportunity to move around, um, which is really important as well, if that's what you want to do. So the world is your oyster, um, you know, and you can go and work, you know, pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, okay, and I think, is that it? I think I must have spoken more than enough, for which I apologise. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I missed the key bit. Gosh. Um, okay. The other thing, again, always nice, always nice to finish on sort of what we do. We're really keen at Solent to get industry speakers in. Okay. We want people to come in. So key people, top level players, come and talk to the students um, about, you know, what it's like in the real, uh, the real world. We also like the students to go out on visits. We like to have students attend conferences and we also have our own conference. I mentioned the networking. Social life, also very important. Um, so what you do outside is as important as inside. It's a whole education. Um, Solent has a really good history of clubs and societies. We have a maritime society um, that is very active and we also have world-class sports facilities. If you're into football, St. Mary's Football Stadium, you can actually see it from the university. Um, so we also have that. We have obviously sailing, if you're into sailing, um, you name it, it takes place in Southampton. Um, next slide. So I think this is every year we have a maritime conference for the students. Um, it's taking place this year at, in middle of February. So in a couple of weeks time, this year we're obviously going online, strangely, well, it's not strange because nobody can go anywhere. Um, so that's gonna be a very different experience for us. Um, but we have three days worth of speakers coming in. Um, so the speakers include people like Martin Stopford, um, Khalid Bishu, who's the king of logistics, um, we have the CEO of NYK coming in to talk to the students. Um, we have Lloyd's Register, no, Lloyd's Foundation coming, um, plus a speaker from Lloyd's List. So lots of people coming in. And we also have alumni coming in. And to me, the alumni, are the, they're the icing on the cake. So they're coming back to us. Some of them left us. Um, seven years ago some of them may have left 12 years ago so they're coming to talk to the students about their experiences what they've done since they left Solent um, you know what's their journey been like and what did their education at Solent do for them so to me those are the best bits ever because I get to see my old students um, you know see how they've grown see how they've developed um, so we have this amazing new building called the Spark, which right in the middle has a very strange red pod. 
um, which I really hope that, you know, if you do come to Solent, that we are back teaching um, face to face in September so that you can actually see it for yourself. Okay, next slide. Okay, so as I said at the conference, key speakers speaking about contemporary subjects. We do like our alumni to come. We have an employment there. When we have the conference face-to-face -face in person, we have an afternoon where employers come to the event. Um, so they come from a wide range of different companies, um, you know, to speak with the graduates and say, these are the opportunities that are available. Um, so it gives you a chance to see what's out there to make, you know, make yourself know really important network with these people, go up to them and say, hi, my name's whatever, you know, I'm really interested in give them your business card, create a business card. Um, you know, it's so much easier to apply for a job when you actually have a name that you can go to and you can say, dear so-and-so, I had the great pleasure of meeting you at the Solent Maritime Conference and away you go. And they say, oh yes, I remember. So fantastic. Um, next slide. Um, okay, student visits, very quickly, we're nearly there now. Um, previous activities off-site, we take students up to the International Maritime Organization. This is really important. Um, every year, pretty much, we go there. A couple of occasions, students have been able to sit in on um, debates at the IMO, which is quite interest, interesting. So they've sat in the gallery. Um, we also take the students into the city. So you might go to the Baltic Exchange, um, Lloyds of London, the Bank of England. Um, in Southampton, we'll take students to the Freightliner Terminal, um, oil spill response, um, which is an amazing place to visit. Um, essentially, they're ready to go anywhere in the world and deal with the maritime oil spill. Um, we try and do an annual visit to the port of Rotterdam and Antwerp. Um, not quite sure how this is going to work now we're in a post-Brexit world, um, but we will endeavour to, you know, maintain those links. And of course, you know, taking the students to the port of Southampton, to the container terminal, the cruise terminal, the car terminal, because the port of Southampton, it's all about the seas, cruise, cars and containers. Um, OK. Um, as I said, you know, just like the industry, we are really global. Um, you know, these are I think these are most of the countries. There might be a few that are missing where we've had students attending um, the maritime degrees. So, you know, Burma, quite an unusual one, Angola, Trinidad, Turkey, lots of people from Turkey, uh, Vietnam, Qatar, pretty much you name it, they're on there. Um, and I think that is so important and it's something that we're really proud of is that we give the students this real international experience so that you can, you know, network for your future jobs. Next slide. Support system at the university, we do care. There's lots of things that we support you with. There is the student hub, which is general support, financial advice help you with academic affairs, health and well-being. We have the study and academic supports, okay? Um, these people are here to specifically help with skills. So, you know, if you're unsure about writing reports or essays, go and seek some help. They'll help you understand the process of critical analysis um, and also research skills. And obviously our international student support team are brilliant. Um, you know, they will help you through so many different um, things as far as, you know, being an international student in the UK. We also have our international alumni ambassadors um, who are there essentially to answer any questions that you maybe don't want to speak to, um, you know, management about. So they will talk to you about their experiences um, as an international student at Solent. 
Um, and again, you can access the, um, the alumni ambassadors by going on the international pages. Okay, next slide. I made it. <laughs> I'm sure, did we slip in some extra slides? I do apologize if I've gone on and on and on. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> so, thank you very much for um, listening. No, no, thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Nikki. And uh, it was uh, very insightful. It, it really gives us a lot of uh, understanding about the course, how to go about it, the, the qualifications required as such, and, 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 uh, and, and more about, uh, you know, what you'll get uh, through the course as well. Um, so what we'll do is we'll now open it up for questions. Um, Arun, maybe you can stop sharing the presentation uh, now. We'll, uh, the, the candidates can then uh, uh, see the video as such. Uh, so my request to everyone, and there are a few persons who are seeing us on Facebook Live as well. So on the, the guys on the Facebook, you may uh, type your questions on the, on the Facebook chat and we'll pick it up from there. The persons on uh, the Zoom um, call, uh, you, you have the Q&A. And uh, so you can write your question over there, which I will spell it out uh, for Nikki to uh, uh, put across her views. And uh, if, so before you write your question on the Q&A, just have a look. Maybe your question is already there. If it is there, then maybe just press on the thumbs up, uh, which means that we know it's the same question, uh, which more people have, uh, wanted to be clarified. So maybe we can prioritize that question as well. Uh, and, and it will save you the time and effort to write that question as well. Um, so, 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 and also uh, what we have done is on the chat, if you see, there is a link wherein we have shared the FAQs, uh, the frequently asked questions. So before typing your question, maybe you can uh, uh, have a look at the, that link as well. So, so let me um, take the questions as they come. Um, the first one or, or maybe the, the latest one, which is from G.S. Srivastav, is asking, what is the level of recognition of these courses by various leading companies in and around UK? Okay, um, I said in the actual talk that um, Solent University is recognized globally and we actually have companies approaching us asking for our graduates. Um, the year before, in fact, the last two, three years, I've not been able to supply, we haven't been able to supply enough graduates. Um, so if we've got the likes of DHL coming to us, Maersk asking us to send students to undertake their graduate training program, I would say that we are, we are recognized. Um, and I guess, you know, it's the link between Solent University and also with Warsash. The two are linked together, you know, inextricably. You know, whilst Warsash is all about the professional seafarers, um, Solent has always been about the dry side. And we spent 15 years working on this and working on our reputation. And that's, that is essentially the last 15 years of my life have been spent working on building up the reputation. And I'm very confident that you could go pretty much anywhere in the world into a shipping company and you could find someone who's been to Solent. Um, you know, our, our stretch is, it's like a spider or is it an octopus? We're, we're pretty much everywhere. So I hope that answers your question. It's got nothing to do with the fact that we're not Oxford or we're not Cambridge. It's we know we are the best in this particular field. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Nikki, for the answer. And, and we, I'm sure you, you guys are. You, you, and you have the pedigree, you have the culture, you, you have everything which, 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 which is required, essentially. OK, uh, now. We got Kashish, uh, who's asking, which modules are exempted from ICS examination after completing this course? Maybe you wouldn't require, uh, remember the name of the modules, but uh, if you know the number of modules which are exempted. Okay, uh, now this is, this is a, an absolute classic one where I say, I wish I had done my homework <laughs> because for the love of goodness, I cannot remember. I'm 99% sure that the economics of international trade is recognized. 
and I think the maritime operations and transport. So I think I think it's two, but don't quote me on that. Please don't quote me on that, Kashish. Um, so that's something that you know we need to check. I apologize. Sure. So so what we'll do is uh, we will we'll be in touch with you, Nikki and uh, Kashish. We will reply to you on an email. Uh, on, on this and if anyone else has a similar question maybe we will we'll just send it out to all the registered participants so the, the answer for this question as such okay now that's an interesting one um you're reading the one for uh, from atul uh, it, I, I was actually i jumped down one so does my experience as captain and junior officer have the same <laughs> Um, uh, good, um, I can't really answer that. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I feel the need to do a sidestep on that. Um, I think all experience as a professional seafarer, be it as a captain and a junior officer, if you're sailing as a captain, obviously, that's really important um, because you have ended up in, in the senior management roles. Um, so you've demonstrated that I am, you know, a manager. Junior officers, um, you'd probably find you'd go into the mid-level. So you might have your COC for a master. You've not sailed as a master. So you might find you're one step behind if you're applying for a job. But again, it really depends on the job and the company. Um, you know, once you've got, say, um, the MSC, that's a whole different level because you've not only got your professional qualifications, you actually have an HE, a higher education qualification as well. Um, so it really does depend on the company, I would say. So, so um, to, to the persons on our Facebook uh, live page, they they couldn't they cannot see the question. So let me um, just uh, phrase the question. It's from Atul who's asking whether the master's experience will differentiate in the kind of job that they will get. And this is from my experience as a placement uh, agency as CN Beyond also recruits uh, per, uh, resources for various companies. So, so my view on this Atul is that. Uh, a master's uh, experience uh, um, may or may not help you to, uh, or, or, or uh, in the in the first job that you get after the course but for surely once you get into that job uh, you might be doing the same job with the chief officer might get or with the second engineer might get but later on once you get into the job I, I think that's where the differentiation comes in and the the progression is probably a little bit more uh, um, smoother, a little bit more faster. That, that's that's my take on this, Atul. Um, let, let's take a question from Amir. Since I have studied in UK, will I still need to require to give an English course test? Uh, um, I, I guess that's yes. It's, uh, uh, um, okay. Amir, um, it depends how long ago you were studying in the UK. If you were, say, at South Shields, Tyneside, or even at Warsash, um, it would be a case-by-case -case basis. You should be okay. Um, but again, we this is quite a specific one. But generally, if you've studied in the UK in the past, I think it's the past two or three years, um, and you have a UK based qualification, usually you are exempted from the English language. Okay, so if you've been taught, you've attended a UK taught educational program in the UK, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're okay. Okay, all right. Um, what what I understand over here is, and this was in my discussion with the uh, the, the international uh, uh, team, is that if this has happened in the last three years, um, mm -hmm. I, I guess that's when you get exempted. And if 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 more than that, then maybe you need to give uh, IELTS again. Yeah, and I think we're moving 
to Duolingo because it's it's a little bit easier, particularly in this current climate. Right, right. I, I think last year Solen moved to Duolingo as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Are there any scholarships available for this course? I wish. Sadly, no. Yeah. yeah. I, I would love to say yes. Um, it's something that I'm trying to work on. I'm actually trying to do some, uh, I want to say schmoozing. I don't know if that's a recognizable word, you know, working with some of the bigger companies to try and say, come on, you know, let's see if we can put in place some scholarships. But at the moment, I'm very sorry, no. Right. Now, is uh, Solent University affiliated with Chevening and Commonwealth Scholarships? I can't answer that. I have, n I, I don't know. I'm sorry. That would be a question for international officers. I'll, I'll, I'll check with Zoe once. Uh, and and I, I think while we are on the topic of scholarship, what you had mentioned it, if you have done um, your uh, your college from Warsaw or Solent, your your undergraduate, then you are eligible for uh, some scholarship. Indeed. Yeah. And uh, so from Shri Kumar, the question is, is there an industry engagement survey available to know the roles, positions Solent University graduates have taken up along with the average salary post-graduation? Okay. Um, I mean, I keep a list of all the different companies um, that our students go into. There is a destination uh, something called a Delhi survey that's done um, by the university. Um, all that does is look at the essentially who's working and the salary. Um, we can try and find last few years information on that, um, but I wouldn't like to answer that without checking. All right. You you mentioned Selly. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, Delhi. It's called the destination. It's the DA, Destination of Leavers in Higher Education, D-L-H-E. And I think you might be able to access that information on the internet. Okay. So it's the Destination of Leavers in Higher Education. All right. Thank, thanks for the queue. We'll, we'll uh, have a look and probably circulate to the participants. Uh, is there any assurance given for jobs after the course? I believe not, but we can, all we can do is facilitate through networking and through the um, Solent conference or the employment fair. Um, and also we always promulgate any posts that we hear. So we, we will not guarantee a job that would be, that would actually not be fair to say that yes, I'll guarantee you a job. Um, we'll do the best we can to assist and make sure that you're aware of all opportunities, but no is the answer. Yeah. Uh, but I think as we were discussing about 75% of the students do get placed uh, while they are still studying. And yep. which I believe is one of the highest uh, uh, in the industry because uh, and, and especially you know and this is for folks from India uh, typically when you go and study outside India you don't get uh, I mean no university gives a um, uh, placement assurance uh, they assist uh, by means of networking through conferences or calling up speakers or or, or, or or industry visits as such and it's it's for the student to do the necessary networking and and getting it uh, through but, but this, uh, I, uh, what I understand is one of the highest, uh, um, you know, um, uh, per, uh, the percentage is one of the highest to, to get placed uh, while you are within the course. So, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, and just to give you an example, last week we ran an event, it was actually run with Carnival, um, an event to help students develop their networking skills. So we, you know, you put them in an environment, so how can you actually network effectively? Um, we also run workshops on how to improve and enhance your online um, visibility. So say through LinkedIn, so how to put together a very professional um, LinkedIn page. So we do a lot of workshop type of things to try and help. 
Um, but yeah, it would it would be it would be blatantly dishonest if I said yes. Of course, you can have a job at the end. But we do have very good results. I understand. Um, question from Sarvana: Does the university provide assistance in renewal of UK visa? I guess not. I'd, again, that would be something for the international office, and it depends on. If you're talking about the post work visa, I would imagine that there will be something in place. But remember, this is brand new. This post work visa has only just is only just coming in. They're still ironing it out as we speak. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Very popular man. <laughs> um... Right. Uh, How's it different from the Rasmus University degree in Rotterdam? Um, right. The only thing I can say is that Erasmus University in Rotterdam, they like applicants on the MSc to have had at least three or four years experience in the industry ashore um, to do some of their degrees. Um, I do know that they've recently just changed their offering, but what they've changed it to, I can't really, I can't really answer that. So the only thing I do know is that, you know, up until recently, they've always wanted students on the MSc to have had industry experience ashore. Okay, and I think they only do the logistics as well. Yes. Might be wrong. No, no, you are correct. It's it's uh, into maritime economics and logistics. So I guess um, uh, they don't have a ship management flavor as such. No, no. Yeah. Uh, from an anonymous attendee, how will I get? Okay, a... well that one's for you, Gaurav. <laughs> uh, how sure will I get a job in India as I have no plans to settle abroad? So my um, uh, you know, uh, advice to you is, if you are planning to go abroad, uh, you should essentially look to uh, spend at least a year or so uh, over there uh, to get generate the ROI, the return on income uh, for that uh, course. If you are planning to uh, you know, just, just stay in India, uh, ideally, you know, two years stay in the country where you are going and then come back to India. I'm sure there'll be enough and more opportunities for you to, 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 to get, but uh, typically in India companies need you to have some kind of shore experience and, and then they'll be more than happy to take you, but to get that shore experience, uh, it's best for you to stay in that country for at least a year, get the experience, get your ROI return on income uh, in return on investment and, and then come back. Yeah, I mean, and the only thing that I can add to that is that India is a major growth market as far as shipping, supply and demand, logistics goes. Um, I do know that there are major plans to actually develop certain ports as hubs to go beyond. Um, so it's a growth, it is a growth area. Probably not as much as sort of computer type stuff, but... <laughs> The ships have got to be there to bring the computers in. <laughs> uh, now, the next question is very, very specific. Right. I, I think it's very long. Uh, so a person with a Panama and Honduras uh, COC, uh, 33 COC, is he eligible for this uh, course? I, I, I know Mr. Rajendra, so I know he has... Uh, uh, sufficient and enough uh, sailing experience, uh, probably more than five years. Uh, so, so that kind of person, would he be eligible for this course? More than five years of experience and a Honduras COC? But is that, a, that's a 3-2, not a 2-2? Two, two. Yes, yes, 3-2. So sailing as, at what rank? 3-2, um, uh, I, I I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think uh, as a second engineer or so, he, he sailed as uh, uh, Rajendra. Maybe if you can write in the chat, that would help. Okay, I'd, it's one. Of, this would be one of those cases where we'd need to look at it specifically individually. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'd, 
<laughs> but you've got a lot of a lot of qualifications there. So right. it might be there's another, you know, there's another route. Right. But but I think um, uh, the question which comes to my mind over here is, um, do you uh, does the university differentiate uh, a COC from a FOC, flag of convenience, or uh, or um, a normal COC? I mean, uh, uh, from India, UK, Australia. What we do is we check for equivalency. Okay. That so really depends where it's from. Okay. Okay. I understand. I don't. I don't have an issue with Panama. I have to say, I said my husband's a chief engineer, and he has tickets from anywhere and everywhere every different shipping company he goes to he gets another ticket <laughs> so he has his uk ticket plus about seven others right right now i think the thing is if you have a coc from the focs uh, then you probably don't get a coc equivalent coc from say uk or india but if you have an india uk coc then you it's easy to get these cocs yeah yeah uh, as far as accommodation goes um are there various ensuite accommodation facilities available for international students? Yes, there are. The university has its own accommodation blocks, um, master's students, postgraduate students. Um, we tend to try and keep them together. Additionally, there is a huge market for um, accommodation, privately rented accommodation in Southampton. Um, so there are many options. Right. Um, yes, I think actually all of our all of our accommodation, I think, is en suite now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, right. Fixed Shri number of intake up. of students. Is, is there a fixed number of intake for students? There is a point at which we will say we cannot take any more. Um, so we we usually would work at no more than 30 per course, sometimes a bit more, because it's about being able to give the students the experience they need um, and the attention they need. Um, I think the highest number we ever had was probably about 45 and that, that was hard very, very hard to at master's level to give the level of attention um, that's needed. Um, so wait and see. <laughs> um, so no is the answer. We don't have a fixed intake, but there is a point at which my hair goes, well, it's pretty much all white already. It, it's, you know, <laughs> there is a point at which I'm starting to think, I need to get in extra members of staff to teach. You know, there's almost a case we'd have to split it. Um, okay, if I come to study the MSc, will I be able to take my family along with me? And is my wife able to work in the UK whilst I am studying? Saga. Okay, this question is answered if you go on the international website and you go on to the student visa tier four visa information. I did have a quick read of it and yes your family I believe can come with you I'm not sure about whether your wife would be able to work that's the one bit I don't know um, but I do know that some you know we do have students on masters who do bring their family right so right. definitely go on the international website okay sure. um, and it will help you figure that one out Sagar, uh, maybe we can also help you in answering this if you go drop a one to one to uh, email to CNB on as well. Okay, Kaka, what's the duration of the course and is there any lenience for people who are sailing or should they stop sailing in order to do the course? Okay. Um, yes. Um, let me think the best way of answering this. Okay, this is a one year course. Teaching starts at the end of September and finishes in May. You are expected to attend the university between those periods of time, okay? You should also be in the UK for the period of time from May to the end of August because that's when you should be doing your dissertation. Um, so, lenience for people who are sailing, mm, you can 
potentially arrive a week late. We've at the moment got a student who arrived three weeks late and they are really struggling. I did suggest that they postpone for a year um, because the course is very intense. There's a lot of work to be covered in a short period of time. Um, I will use this point to say that there is an alternative there is a distance learning MSc in shipping operations. It's not business, it's not management, okay? Um, which is also delivered by Solent, but directly through Warsash. So that's another potential if you can't see your being able to come ashore for a year. So, Sadly, no lenience for people who are sailing. It, it's in your own best interest. I have a duty of care to make sure that people attend the course for the duration and, you know, have the best possible chance of success. I don't want someone starting three weeks late and I know that they're just going to play catch up for the next four months. That's not fair and it's not the way to learn, um, you know. Sometimes I'm my own worst enemy and I'll talk people out of the course, but I do not want anybody to fail. That's not, you know, that's not what we want to happen. It's a lot of money. We want you to pass. Okay. Right. And, and I think uh, for you, Koka, uh, if you're looking to do a course while you're sailing a distance learning one, there are a couple more in uh, through Solent. We are doing a webinar on the coming Saturday, 13th of February on, on one of their other courses, MSc Shipping Operations, which you might attend and you'll have a view of that course as well. Um, Sarvan, okay. I know you wanted to speak, uh, Sarvan, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll take your question in the end probably. I'll let you uh, speak as well. I'll give you speaking rights. Um, I, I think anonymous attendee has a question on Malaysian COC whether yeah. you again, you know, no reason why not. We'll look at equivalency. Um, I don't see why not. Um, again, you know, if it's a master's COC, um, I'm sure there'll be equivalency. Yeah. Um, as far as can we get the syllabus and the course content, I did say in the webinar, if you go on to the portal, you should be able to access the modules um, through the portal. Yes, yes, it's, it's all there. And, and as far as Sarah Vanan, can Indians apply for faculty positions in the university? Is this post MSc? <laughs> Of course you can, if there is a job being advertised um, and you have the qualifications. You know, as I said, we have a global, um, a global team teaching, but obviously you can only apply if there's a position. Okay. Yes. I, I think he had raised his hands to uh, speak. I don't know. I, I think he's, let, let me give him a, a speaking. Or, okay, let, him, let me give him a speaking right. He wanted to speak as well, Sarvanan. Uh, Sarvanan, do you want to speak? All right, I, I, I think that's uh, that, that's fine. Uh, okay, you're there. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Zashi. Already addressed my question, so I'm okay. satisfied with it. All right, all right. That, that's fine. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. Uh, uh, um, right. I think uh, we are done with all the Q and A. Um, let me take a quick uh, uh, feedback uh, on the session, a couple of uh, polls on that. Let me, would you be interested to attend the course uh, is my, is my question to the attendees.
in the meanwhile while people answer uh, this one more question uh, nikki does the curriculum have introduction or anal use of analytics for shipping industry problem solving um, i think this is become a complicated question <laughs> Uh, does the curriculum have introduction or use of analytics for shipping industry? But I am asking this as it become an industry requirement. Okay. Well, if it's become an industry requirement, I am pretty sure that my colleague, Dr. Dimitriadis, who deals with finance, economics, and analytics, um, will be potentially looking at it. Um, it's it's certainly a um, interesting area. Um, we are looking to um, be undertaking a revalidation um, shortly, so it's something again. As remember, I said it's a movable feast that we do keep on trying to bring in new elements as and where. Um, so definitely, it's actually something that we have in the undergraduates. <laughs> The undergraduates have an introduction to analytics. So I am absolutely sure um, that it will be in there somewhere or it will certainly arrive. All right, um, thanks. In the meanwhile, yeah, while you've got- I, I, that's, that's an area, you know, I think that's a fantastic area to look at. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I think it's it's one of the most relevant areas in the in the current uh, day and age. Everyone is moving to analytics and uh, you know being able to serve in a more uh, relevant way. And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, meanwhile uh, to the other uh, persons, we've switched to the next poll. Uh, I, I think about 94% of the students of the participants, remaining participants, did say that they are planning to, they, they would want to enroll for the course. And out of them, we just uh, asked a poll on when do you plan to enroll for the course? This year, next year, or not sure? Um, so, so I'm looking for answers on that. I think we've spent about uh, a good a minute to 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 for the participants to answer so i'll end the poll and uh, share results uh, about 21 percent of you do want to attend the course this year and uh, re, uh, a few next year and uh, i think 50 percent are not sure maybe you know we, uh, we could we could, we could have a discussion on on when you would want to um, you know uh, do the course as well I think everybody's a bit unsure because of the uh, whole COVID situation. Absolutely, I absolutely agree. It's it's hard. Who can make any decisions? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so this is my final poll question on uh, were your expectations met? Uh, what you thought uh, that what we'll get in the webinar? Were your expectations met? Uh, was the session useful? And how would you rate the session? So that's for uh, the, I'm sorry, I did not launch the poll. Here's the poll for all the participants. I'm glad you didn't put one, did Nikki speak too much? <laughs> um, so, so I think um, Atul's question is, uh, he's 34 and he plans to start the course when he'll be 36 uh your views on that uh, possibly uh, on the age factor i have no issue with the age factor we were discussing the other day about the age range so we have the students who come straight from an undergraduate degree so they're about 22 23 then we have our professional seafarers who come in um with their master's tickets their coc so they're going to be 28 to 35 the eldest person that I have knowledge of was 59. And he essentially wanted to do the course because he just wanted to learn. Oh, fantastic. So the age range really is from 23 right the way up. Um, and there is no right or wrong. I, mean, I did my undergraduate degree. I finished it when I was 40. Uh, because I did all the marriage children. So I sailed, then I did the marriage, the children, and then I decided to go back to education. I was a very, very slow learner. I was, I was rubbish at school. 
<laughs> terrible at school. <laughs> so there is, there is, you know, hope for us all when we get older, you know. You right. might not have been so good at school, but you can get better. Right. Uh, Adil, if you want to discuss this further, I, I can we, we can discuss this one on one. You can we, we can have a call with you uh, as well. Uh, but, but I'm sure uh, Nikki would have answered it. Uh, Guru Sevak, I think your question has been answered in the webinar as such. Uh, on the basis of education completed through the course, can I apply for a job in uh, in UK for this course? Yes, uh, they gave a two year visa, and hence you can apply. Um, um, yeah, I, I think uh, that that's uh, pretty much uh, it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the um, um, for the result on the poll as well. I think um, it's, it's fairly positive. I'm, I've shared the uh, result. It's a very positive feedback as well. Uh, thanks. Uh, it just validates uh, the, the the nice session that you've done, uh, Nikki. Thank you so much. Um, I, I let uh, Deepika uh, is, is there. She probably just wants to, you know, send a message out to the participants who are here. Or as well, Deepika, over to you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, Captain Rana and uh, Nikki. I must say, um, I am not a kind of person who generally attend these sessions. Sorry, I, I find it very boring at times. But this was one of them which I've attended at whole. And seriously, I, I like the energy you put in and really look forward. I know it has been a busy week for you. And I'm, I'm sure in case if you would like to host more webinars, I would love to be part of that. Oh, thank and, you. <laughs> and for my next trick. <laughs> and a big thanks to all the participants, uh, especially pulling out time um, on a Saturday afternoon. And really, I enjoyed the session and I hope the feeling is mutual. All of you have had a good time enjoying the session. Uh, just before we end today's session, I would like to give you, uh, I would like to tell one thing. As you all know that CN Beyond is very much into recruitments as well. Uh, we do recruitments for show job for mariners and marine related jobs for non-mariners as well. So at present, we are hiring for various, various roles, um, like we are hiring for shipping, we are hiring for logistic companies, agencies, ship brokers, charters, port operations, commercial operations. And we are looking for mariners, non-mariners, and people who are already in shore job, uh, looking for a job, job change for these roles. So we have a, a position available right from the executive level to senior management level. In case anybody would like to have a look, I have just shared the link uh, for job section in the chat window. You can have a quick look on our website uh, to see that what all openings are available. Uh, 